Hello, everybody. I am Camille Jamerson. I am the host of Mobile Moments, to which you have tuned in. And I'm also the CEO of CDJ and Associates and also the Camille Company, which is sponsoring Mobile Moments. This week's episode is absolutely amazing. And I can say that in advance because of who we have coming up. Um, we're going to talk about um, doing business in this brand new world. Um, as we know, March 13th-ish, um, this nation changed and um, it's never going back to what it was. Um, be that right, wrong, good, bad, indifferent, what have you, it's never going back. And so now we find, find ourselves thrust into this new way of, of doing business, new way of working, new way of communicating. Um, and eventually we might get back to a different sense of normalcy, but what we used to do um, in that world, that's changed forever. Um, some businesses were absolutely devastated by COVID. Some will never reopen. And some have had to make adjustments and changes um, because of it. So we're going to talk today about, um, we, we're going to have three business owners, one including myself, that we're going to share with you what happened to our businesses um, because of COVID-19, what shifts and adjustments we had to make in order to navigate this season, um, if we had to close all together to tell you what that's been like. Um, and then we're going to talk about um, if, if and when we revamp what that looks like. And then we're going to talk about the lessons learned, what we learned in this season that um, we want to share with you so you can prepare your business for the next emergency, whatever that looks like, and you can be better prepared overall. Um, so it's always a good time to sit down and think and, and strategize based on um, what you've gone through, what you've been through, and the lessons that you've learned because of it. So we're going to take the time to do that today. So with that being said, I am bringing into um, this amazing mogul moment to um, business owners, the first being Dominic Irvin. Dominic is a realtor um, with Real Estate One, I believe, and he has his um, own um, business entitled Homes by Dominic, and he'll tell you more about that when he joins. Um, we also have Katrina Mitchell, who in addition to being on my personal board of advisors, Katrina is a coach, um, and she is the founder and CEO of Katrina Michelle Creative, as well as the Excellence Factor. And Katrina is the owner of Fundamental Spa, which is in Pleasant Ridge, Michigan. Would you guys help me welcome them to today's mogul moment? And this is the part where you've got to clap until I get them in the meeting, okay? So clap, clap, clap. They'll be here in a second. Hello, hello, you guys. Hey, hey. Hey. Hey, I got him in. All right. I was How are just, you? I'm good. I'm good. I was just telling these guys that you guys were going to be ready to jump in. We're going to share kind of what happened to our businesses during COVID, um, what um, doing business in this brand new world looks like, what revamp or vamping back up looks like, and then what kind of, what were the lessons that we learned um, from this? Um, so we can be better prepared for the next um, emergency, whatever that looks like. So yeah. before we jump into all of that, I, I gave people just kind of your names and, and your businesses, but I want you guys to give people a better idea of um, who you are and, and what you do. So we'll start with you, Katrina. Okay. So hello, everyone. My name is Katrina Mitchell. And I am the owner of Fundamentals Relaxation Spa. We are a boutique quaint day spa here in Pleasant Ridge, Michigan. And then I'm also the CEO and lead strategic coach for Katrina Michelle Creative. And um, at KMC, we help startups, particularly creatives, build businesses and build brands. Awesome. And I'm putting this in the chat, guys, so you'll be able to um, get both of their business Facebook pages um, right there in the chat. So, Dominic? 
Again, my name is Dominic Irvin. I am the founder and CEO of Homes by Dominic. Um, I assist um, everyday consumers to purchase, sell, and invest in real estate. Um, I, I um, service the uh, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Tri-County area. So if you're looking to purchase, uh, buy, or sell in those areas, I'm available to assist your real estate needs. Awesome. And I'm putting yours in there too. Awesome. Great. So guys, if you look in the chat, you'll see um, both um, Dominic's page and Katrina's pages. Um, so you make certain that you connect with them when this is over. So um, guys, why don't you, let's start here. Tell me how COVID-19 affected you. As I was just saying in the opening, um, March 13th-ish, I guess it was, um, mm -hmm. the world as we know changed forever and it's not going back. That's just real time. Exactly. Not going back to what it was. So, um, you know, it's one of those things like I can always remember where I was and what I was doing when, you know, the world shut down. So tell me what happened with you in that season. What what happened and what decisions you had to make? Um, this time we'll start with you, Dominic. Um, well, as you said, March 13th, it was like the world just stopped. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my office and we were all surrounded by the television waiting for the governor to announce, you know, what direction we were headed in. And when she announced that we were shutting down, it was pretty much that mm -hmm. um, because we didn't know what exactly was going on and where we were headed. So we did pretty much shut down for a small period of time. Um, but we were able to operate virtually as much as possible. Being in real estate, that's very difficult, but we were still able to at least, you know, stay in the eye of the public as much as possible, being cautious, what was being sensitive as to what was going on. What about you, Katrina? Um, so we shut down the week before everyone else was mandated to shut down. So I had a discussion with my team when I saw it coming. My, my spidey senses said, okay, if it's over here, if it's in Ohio, it's on its way. Mm -hmm. And so not knowing the level of spans and devastation and what was going to happen, I just had a conversation with, okay, so how, if we stay open, then how are we going to deal with clients coming in um, and that type of thing. So then, so we decided that we will push through <clears throat> as we could and then that following Monday she was like push all you want but you can't push here so we shut down <laughs> right made a decision for us yeah yeah so um, again and being an enhanced on business we can't do business virtually so we just had to just we had to shut it off shut it down and cancel all of our clients which was one of the most painful things I'd ever had to do was just, you know, tick off money, just watch it go away, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, Dom, you said that you were able, though, to shift some of your business virtually. So what did that look like? Were you, like, showing homes online or just finishing mm -hmm. the projects that were already in motion? What did that look like? It was pretty much just what you said, finishing projects that were already in motion. I was still able to hold seller uh, consultations. I was still able to consult with buyers and things of that nature, but showing homes was pretty much at a standstill. That is very difficult to do virtually, at least without me being present in that particular property. Right. Um, so it was just pretty much wrapping up the transactions and keeping um, that funnel open, continuously putting sellers and buyers in that funnel so that when we did open up, I could, you know, just bounce back as if nothing ever happened. I mean, being in real estate, it's already a roller coaster. So COVID hit, it was just like, okay, let's stop, figure this out. How do we adjust and let's keep on ticking. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so here's the real question. How were you, how are you, because we're still in the midst of it, able to keep your businesses afloat given either the total secession in Katrina's case, or in your case, um, a total ramp down of normal business structure. For me, I could move 80% of my 
business virtual. Um, there's still a, 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 a bit of it that where I go on to go to clients, really get um, a feel of their culture and their vibe or what have you. And that helps. Um, I do uh, their photo shoots and stuff for their branding. But I've been able to do quite a bit of what I do um, virtually, but every business hasn't been that lucky. So what does that look like for you? How have you been able to maintain um, business up until this point? Either of you, whichever one of you want to start. Um, again, like I said, I mean, it was pretty much just wrapping up deals that were already in. Realtors, we were not able to show properties. Let's just say like that. But the other side, title companies, uh, mortgage lenders, um, inspectors, they were still able to work. They were still deemed essential. So as they were still able to proceed with the transactions, we were still able to close deals. But once those deals that were in the pipeline were done, that we, so it was pretty much, you know, living on those deals, reserves, and, you know, just the grace of God. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, I bought my business in the middle of an economic downturn in 2008. So when this happened, I was like, oh, I've been here before. I got this. Yeah. Well, I thought I had it, but this is totally different. Yeah. You know, now I have to figure out what the next step is because I have to touch people for a living. And so that really has shifted things for me. So what I really, I did have some money in reserve that I was able to float through for a good little while. And so that was a blessing. And then I have multiple streams of income coming into the spa, even though it's brick and mortar, I still have online gift certificates and, um, and coupons that people actually were buying in the middle of the pandemic. So they were anticipating coming back. Wow. So, yeah. So that, so having those additional streams of income, it hasn't been sizable, but it's still good to, to know that there are people who are looking at the other side of this. So once things started to open up, my phone immediately started ringing. So I've been able to, to adjust because of the reserves. And then I called my landlord and called the utility companies and said, Hey, I, I can't pay. Or mm -hmm. how much will you take? Yeah. yeah so, so I made sure I was proactive instead of reactive because at first, I didn't want to make any of the calls because so no one likes calling someone telling them I can't meet my obligation. Yeah. But I felt it was a responsible thing to do to say this is where we are and I need my business to be open because we're not going to be here forever. So help help a sister out in the meantime. And so that was that was um, an immediate step that I took to make sure that I was proactive versus being reactive. I think a key with that, Katrina, with this particular um, disaster, for lack of a better word, it affected everybody. So it wasn't just like, you know, you really had to explain to people what was going on um, in your particular case, because it was like they they're feeling it, too. Mm -hmm. So um, that it, I guess that's a positive. Um, not everybody understood, you yeah. know, they may not have wanted to, you know, but everybody got it because yeah. um, they were feeling the pinch, too. Um, so when when when. For example, our, we're all in the same state. So when our governor says, when she finally lets us off punishment <laughs> and says, <laughs> okay, state can reopen, things look safe, blah, blah, blah. What does that look like for you? What are you going to do or are you going to do anything differently than you did before? Well, go ahead, Katrina. I was just saying in what respect is overall just overall and how and how you are going to ramp back up how you're going to service clients are there still precautions and safety measures that you're going to put in place whether or not the state does i guess that's that's more or less the question okay Dom, um, i'm gonna let you go i think of my answer <laughs> <laughs> okay um when she let us loose real estate, we were uh, deemed essential back, uh, I want to say it was May 17th. Mm -hmm. So May 17th, we have been pretty much back open to operate as if nothing happened. 
Um, but of course, we are following the CDC guidelines and guidelines that have been put in place by my brokerage, uh, Real Estate One, and things of that nature. So, we're, you know, uh, hand sanitizer, we're Lysoling down, we're making sure that sellers are following protocols, we're making sure that buyers are following protocol while we're out showing properties. We've got gloves, we've got masks. So, we're as much as we can to you know keep ourselves safe keep our clients safe while we conduct business i mean real estate is never going to stop 100 percent. so you know, we just have to adapt and keep it and keep it ticking um katrina had mentioned um my background is mortgage lending before i transitioned into real estate over almost 10 years ago um and when the economy hit in 2008 I was on the other side. So again, like I said, real estate is already a roller coaster. So this was nothing out of the norm, except we just had, it, it, it affected everybody. So we just had to kind of pull back, put a strategy in place, how we're going to navigate through this. And here we are. I mean, we haven't had any issues or anything like that. So Dom, has business pretty much been the same? Because in the back of my head, I'm like, who's looking for a house in the middle of a pandemic? That's you what I'm saying. But I, I am because then I had to retract that thought because my um, husband's son and his wife just um, recently closed on their house. So mm -hmm. I don't know how long that process had been going on prior to COVID, but mm -hmm. I suppose people are still looking to sell and buy. So has business been pretty much the same? Have you noticed a little drop? What, what's been kind there of- There was a drop because like I said, there was like a two month period where we couldn't really show property. We can't show properties virtually. Um, so we were unable to move about unless it was for essential reasons and real estate was not deemed essential. Mm -hmm. so two months, we were pretty much done. So it was, like I said, continuously uh, staying in contact with sellers and buyers because their interest and their demand was still there. It was just, how can we get back out into the, the public to, you know, to buy and sell? Okay. And the good thing, the confidence of the consumer never failed. Although unemployment rates skyrocketed, everyone, everyone was not unemployed. And those are the ones that were still uh, making business happen. That's good. That's good. Okay, Katrina. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I believe our date for, we were given the date of June 15th to reopen. And I made the decision that not to reopen. I thought it was too soon. So I went against the grain and I was a little concerned about it in a way, but I had to make sure that my team stayed safe and my clients stayed safe. So, um, yeah, so I had to make that hard call. Of course, I want to go back to work and I want to be able to service my clients and my clients are, are ready, but really based on what we do, and the type of service that we provide, we could potentially cause more harm than good. Mm -hmm. So that's why I made the decision to just wait. So I believe that we may be closer to opening at the end of August, perhaps. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Right. You know, I anticipated what would happen. I anticipated my th thought at the beginning, I said, okay, let's get through all the summer holidays to make sure things don't, because they're gonna go up because people are excited mm -hmm. to go out. And let's see how we level off. Mm -hmm. So now from as we prepare to go back, we will have to go back at 50% capacity. Okay. One thing that's great about fundamentals being a smaller boutique style um, spa is that we are not, we don't have 15, 20 massage rooms. Oftentimes you're in the spa by yourself. No, right. So it's really giving us the opportunity to amp up our personalized, ser personalized service. Mm -hmm. So people can come in and they can have their services. Now, the, the issue, of course, is, is that you can't be six feet away from a person and give them a spot. <laughs> right. You can't. can't so, so the ongoing question and my ongoing going dilemma is when will it ever be safe to touch a stranger again? You know, and in the instance that is someone that I know, I still don't know if I have been infected. Because if I wear a mask and, and all those things, but I'm, you know, careless or something happens and I get infected and I have the, the possibility of passing it on to someone who no longer had, who didn't have it. So, so yeah, so I'm working through some protocols. I know that my team will be tested before they 
come in and then they'll have a regular testing schedule so to make sure they were always infection free. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the facility, we're going to have a deep clean at the beginning, um, you know, before we open and have a regular schedule of deep cleaning. And we'll also have air purifiers in the room. And then we'll make sure that we're wearing masks and face shields and those things that have been mandated by the state. However, the client at some point in theory will have to remove their mask for service. Right. And that makes me extremely uncomfortable. So because there's too many unknowns with Mm COVID-19. So I don't honestly know when I will personally feel safe. I don't know. um, Same with my, with my team. They're, they're, they're not feeling it, you know, and it's a very hard pill to swallow when you make your living in this type of industry. It's not as a massage therapist, again, it's different than a nail tech or a hairstylist. Everyone is still at risk when you're, close to the public, but massage therapy is totally different. So business model wise is really caused me to step back and say, okay, so what does this mean? Do we shut down the brick and mortar forever? You can't, again, you can't take massage online. However, there's opportunity for wellness services and coaching and other things that I can incorporate. However, it won't be the same. It won't be the same. So uh, it's still a big, huge question mark, you know, Um, realistically, we can't stay closed until they find a vaccine. So at some point, I have to make the hard call and determine what the future looks like. And and it's it's, it's been a challenge. And you talk about business model, and that's a good transition to kind of my next question. Is there, and I know this this pandemic kind of came out of the clear blue sky, but of course, (laughs) as we're finding out information, some people knew about it significantly longer than they have let on and has caused this thing to be a lot larger than it needed to be here in the States. But be that as it may, by the time the general public really got their arms around what was going on, it was too late. COVID was already running rampant. So it kind of sideswiped us. Um, So even that notwithstanding, is there anything that you wish you had done or wish was in place when this pandemic happened that you're going to fix or adjust or change so you're prepared for that for next whatever that looks like um it gave me it honestly gave me the opportunity to really work on my business rather than work in my business That's good. That's good. Um, to you know up my marketing and things of that nature because we don't know how long this thing is going to be going on it seems as if people are going to be home more and a lot longer. So I'm transitioning a lot, a lot of my marketing pieces to kind of gear toward, you know, direct mail, um, social media with people being home more, their own social media. more. So just pulling, you know, uh, marketing dollars from certain avenues and putting, uh, replacing them to others to kind of, again, uh, stay in the face of, of the, of the public. That's because good don't know how long this is going to be going on. But again, like I said, the good thing is the consumer demand for real estate is still there. People always need places to live. It's again, with the spikes and then we're flat, we're uh, spiking, we're flat. It makes all of us nervous because as she said, when are we going to really be able to kind of interact with public without that fear oh you might have something or not knowing if i have something it's just you know we're still taking it one day at a time but again like i said practicing all of the precautions that have been set forth that's good what about you katrina any um i wish i would have had for you (laughs) um i wish that i would have built a stronger online community with my clients so i primarily Speak with my clients through emails for the most part, of okay. course, face to face. However, I wish I would have had a stronger online community so I could have touched them differently. So I did send some emails out throughout, but I stayed a little bit quiet because, you know, when COVID hit, you were getting an email from everybody from the exactly. shoe shop. I mean, exactly. everybody. So I'm like, I'm not going to say because it's going to get lost. Yeah. In that. So I stayed pretty quiet so i realized that by me doing that when i do speak people are like oh what she said 
you know, because right, right, that was Katrina. That was Katrina. Wait, right, what? <laughs> right. It, it disrupts it, you know. So I, I try not to get caught in the fray because yeah. there wasn't enough to say. Like, what am I going to say? The same thing everybody else said. Like, we don't know what's happening. We got to shut down. Like, exactly. I don't even care, you know. So, but in, with that being said, if I had a stronger online community, a way to communicate with people through Facebook had more um, activity on my Facebook page interaction then I would have been able to touch them in a more personal way mm -hmm. faster. So that was one, one thing. And I agree with Dom. It was a, I, when I thought about when it first happened, I said, okay, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, why is this happening now to me in my business? Like, what does this mean? And for me, it wasn't really a pivot. It was a reset. It was okay. Sit down. And all those things you said you were going to do, you need to do those things now. Um, the things that financially and and strategic planning and all those things that you never had time to do, do those mm -hmm. things now so you'll be better prepared. Because I did, like I said, I had some things in place, but they weren't as strong as they should have been. Mm -hmm. And then you discover that when government starts giving out money, you're not ready because your taxes aren't done. Or, you know, so those things like that where you're so busy, again, working in your business, you don't have the opportunity to work on it. So I, I appreciate the time of reset and just to settle for a minute and breathe, you know, yeah. um, and I was only able to do that because I had prepared prior to this. Mm -hmm. So good. That's good. Because for my business, I think that um, like like you, Dom working on my business it's like I rarely have time to do that because I'm a part of what I do is working in other people's businesses exactly so I give all of my creative juice to them um building the things that I build for them that I don't necessarily take the time to do the things that I need to do for my business so I really appreciate that point and someone in the chat um Gwen she also said that you know she appreciated that comment that um, it's um, time to work on our businesses versus in our businesses. And Whitney says on here that it taught this season has taught her to save better and for a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I, and I can attest. I, I, that was that was that was one of the things that I said um, for my business. I mean, my my personal resources are one thing, but I want to make certain that I have a certain amount in my business reserves. So yeah. should something ever jump off like this again, I don't have to start leaping in, right? Leaping into, you know, my piggy bank in order to keep the business afloat or wear Mr. Jamerson out one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> um, so that, that was um, a good takeaway. And the other thing um, that I wish I had was that I really wish I had more online resources that I could have sold during yeah. this time stuff that's evergreen um, courses and classes and, and workshops and we webinars taped already um, that I could have been promoting during this time, stuff that's evergreen, you know, that, that yeah. um, is relevant all the time. Um, and I could have used that as an additional stream of income during this time. Um, but that's something I've been planning, been planning, been planning, been planning and didn't do. So now um, with this lull, um, I've had the time to really start um, working on that piece. So I appreciate um, um, all of those comments on that. So how are you communicating your new norms to the client? Um, you guys talked about email. Is there anything that you're going to do differently going forward because everybody's at home now? Um, are we doing more social media? Are you looking at new ways to communicate? Frequency, what, what are you thinking going forward? Like Katrina said, I mean, every time you turn on the news, I mean, every other news feed on social media, you're getting the COVID information. So um, still being careful and sensitive to the information that I assimilate to my audience and things of that nature. But um, again, like I said, I'm spending more dollars on direct mail. I'm um, in the process of creating a newsletter to start sending out to my farm um, database things of that nature, um, repping up my social media presence. Um, all of my platforms um, have done an overhaul of their interfaces and things of that nature, which allows me to, you know, give cleaner and better 
um, marketing to the public and things of that nature. So uh, again, this COVID, it was a complete reset, not just for my business, but for the industry itself. Because, wow. I mean, it was it was literally a, literally that a reset because I mean we kind of shifted how we did business for about ninety days. You know, we were only able to do virtually. Now, while there were some brokerages that you know continue to show properties and things of that nature, you know, most of us try to you know what I'm saying abide by the rules. You know, as a realtor, we are held to higher ethical standards. So you know, people follow our leadership. So it was important that, you know, we follow the the guidelines that was set forth from the governor and things of that nature. Okay. So keep that that um that presence in the community. I love it. What about you, Trina? Yeah, I think I'm gonna continue, of course, with um emailing. I'm I'm at uh, about a once a month frequency. It may double up to twice a month. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they know that we are working towards coming back. Oddly enough, again, the clients are super excited about coming back. They, they haven't missed the beat. Now, I do believe that there will That's be That's a good thing. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. I believe yeah. there will be some who are going to be hesitant about coming back, but I'm so encouraged mm -hmm. that there are people that are waiting to see yeah. it. So, that you know, consumer confidence. Yes, yes. You know, one thing, uh, right. And one thing, um, Camille, when you mentioned your evergreen products, I was thinking that even in the midst of this, our clients want to hear our voice. They want to hear a voice that they trust. Mm -hmm. They want to hear a voice that they know um, will give them sound advice in, in the industry and in our area of expertise. And yeah. so for me, I am really working on positioning myself more as an authority in the wellness, in the wellness uh, arena. A lot of people just think I'm just a massage therapist, but they don't understand that I have mm -hmm. studied health for 20 plus years and mm -hmm. I really have a keen understanding of, of wellness. Mm -hmm. And so I have just kind of dismissed that and not really seen the, Camille, you on the camera with the world can see your oh, eyes. I'm you're right, I'm so it's sorry. Not me, I'm not me sorry. with Starbucks, it's everybody. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I have, I have I have dismissed that. And so, um, but now more than ever, I see it's important for that voice to be heard because people don't know what to believe. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. And again, I am not a doctor. However, I can encourage you to be well. We are dealing with so many, so many issues that affect the physical body outside of COVID, you know? And so the, the stress of not having, having a job or, your family member being sick, all those things affect your health. And so just infusing a little bit of more of that into my marketing, what I do, because no one wants to hear any more COVID news. There's nothing more else, nothing really else to say. Exactly. But how do, we, how do we all begin to adjust post COVID in the event that fundamentals has to shut down until January? Then what are we going to do? Because I don't want to lose all of my clients, of course, mm -hmm. but they want to hear from us and they want to know that we're here and we're okay. And I think yeah. that's important because they don't have a lifeline to know, okay, are they going to, are they ever going to open or what it is? So the clients that have called me, I said, okay, I'm coming back. I'm good. You know, I'll let you know when they're like, okay, good. As long as you're coming back, you know, so right. I think, it's, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. so I think right. you know, so I think if we have, if we stay in the forefront, cause we've all worked really hard to build our businesses. And so we don't, we cannot allow something like this. It's just a hiccup. You know, exactly. to take over. It's just that it came so much out of out of nowhere. We were just blindsided by it. But it's been ninety days of our life. It hasn't been six years. So we can adjust to ninety days, you know, 120 days. We'll be all right. But yeah. we just have to we have to make that, you know, make those necessary adjustments. Yep. So what's the biggest lesson that you guys learned about yourself during this time? Not necessarily about the business, but about yourself. What did you learn about you? during this season i'm resilient mm -hmm. again like i said i mean real, real estate in itself is a, is a roller coaster so i mean it, it's not for the faint of heart so i mean being able to bounce back and bounce back quick mm -hmm. uh, has really really helped me yeah yeah so resilience i like that trina yeah. um 
I think I learned that I'm a leader. And um, because a lot of my decisions that I've had to make have gone against the grain. And at a time when most of your colleagues and in the industry want to do, they want to go back to work, but I made the decision to say no. For my company, I, I'm going against the grain. And I didn't really look at that as leadership skills. It's just something that I that I do. But as people began to give me feedback, they recognize that as leadership. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, I receive that, you know. Mm -hmm. And the first person that you have to lead is yourself. That's and I I realized in the midst of this, when everything began to go down, that I first had to lead me and say, okay, Katrina, now what are you going to do in this crisis? And like, like Dom said, resilience, you know, I, I feel that I was born to be an entrepreneur. So it really wasn't, it was just like, okay, so what's the next gig over here that you're going to do, you know? Um, and so it's, it's different when you, when you're, when you have entrepreneurial blood running through your veins, like it was nothing for me to think of yeah. what other money can I make on the side? So yeah. But it was also, again, that step back to say, okay, well, let's use wisdom in this and lead yourself down the right path as you do so. That's it. Yeah. Um, and just some of the comments I've got. Um, Renee called you a trendsetter, um, Katrina. Um, uh, Whitney says on here that all of this has helped her appreciate her family and friends more. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Which is also something else that I can attest to as well, because... Um, when everything shook out, I didn't care about the Camille Company, CDJ and Associates, nothing. I won't know if my mama was okay and if my husband had food in the house. Because when this all jumped off, I was in Canada. And wow. uh, yeah, so um, all of a sudden I started appreciating that American flag a little bit more. I'm like, I want to go home. I need to go home. <laughs> and then Canada so politely um, said, you know, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Um, they were kind of urging people who were um, not uh, Canadian born or there on visa to go back to your place of residence. So the conference that I was at cut short and um, I have never driven across that tunnel. Um, okay. as fast as I did that particular I night. Right. <laughs> right, I was getting it. You hear me? Because just because there were so that. many unknowns. I just yeah. didn't know. I'm like, are they going to shut me down? I'm going to be oh, right. standing up. Or, I mean, I just didn't know. And um, then come to find out, you know, it's probably safer where I was at. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, all I could think about was getting to my family, you know, and making sure that, you know, we did the things that were necessary to um, protect us. And, you know, I, I'm bleach queen anyway. So I was like, let's get it. <laughs> let's sanitize this house. And then we are shutting it down. Um, so, yeah, I, I got a real, real new appreciation um, mm -hmm. for the things and people um, that were important. And it also helped me discern what wasn't important and the people and things yeah. that weren't important. Yeah. Um, stuff that I thought I just had to do. Um, I'm not pressed. <laughs> I'm not. I just got, I'm just not pressed um, anymore. And um, so much has changed. It, it would be very difficult for me to go back to like the way that it was. And I, I appreciate that mm -hmm. um, because if you don't change, you die. Exactly. So, um, Let's see. Um, oh, we got another um, awesome uh, comment from Orlando. It says, to hear the positive testimonies is pleasing to the ear. While we have so much negativity hitting us daily, this talk has made yeah. a huge impact. I appreciate that, Orlando. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and that's one of the points of, thank you. That's one of the points of um, Mogul Moments is to share kind of life behind, what we call it, life behind the velvet rope of entrepreneur so people can really hear um, what kind of goes on in building and creating businesses because sometimes they just think we're just footloose and fancy free and we got all the time in the world to do whatever we want. We work half-heartedly or, or whatever and they don't really know um, what goes into building businesses and the decisions like you guys have talked about today that have to be made um, in order to protect those that work for you and to protect the people that entrust you. So um, I'm glad that we've been able to share 
and enlighten people as to what entrepreneurship is all about. So make this quick, this quick shift. Um, and this isn't something we pre-talked about. So just go with me here for a second. With all of this current civil unrest um, that, that we're seeing in our country right now, um, for me, it has kind of solidified how important um, it is for African-Americans to own and create businesses. And um, one of the things that I, I've been trying to do um, in this season of Mogul Moments is highlight African-American businesses and African-American business owners for that reason. Um, because I want to encourage more of us um, whether it starts off as a side hustle while you continue to work your nine to five or not. Um, I want to encourage more of us um, to get our own stuff. Yeah. Um, so that that's just that's just me. That's just me. And I know that that isn't for everybody. Bingo. And that's OK. But you guys yeah. tell me what you think. What do you what is what is this season? Um, con, uh, cons what is this season showing you as it relates to businesses i mean i know we've been talking a lot about um support black businesses and buy black and i think that's important too that that should be um that should should be something we talk about but i think what it also shows us is how many areas we aren't in exactly. because you're trying to buy black in a certain area and you i mean you look in every like it we at takisha ain't nowhere you know we are nowhere so Okay, you guys, you talk to me. You tell me. I mean, those are those are my sentiments exactly. I mean, you just hit the the nail on the head when you mentioned this Black Lives Matter movement and how um, they want all of Black people to stop patronizing, you know, mm -hmm. white businesses and things of that nature. But we're not present to take that spot. Yeah. So again, like I said, I mean, th this has shown us where our deficiencies are and where we as a community need to come together to fill those voids mm -hmm. if we're going to see a progressive and successful Black Lives Matter movement. That's good. And it, it hurts because again, I mean, in times like this, we want to support our own, but we can't. Because again, like I said, we're not there. It's very difficult for us to shift just shift everything and stop patronizing, you know, what we're used to, what's affordable to us. Example, um, they said stop uh, patronizing Walmart. Where are we going to go? Mm -hmm. Where to go where we can get the quality for the price that we get at Walmart. If we go to Target, we're going to pay $2 more. Yes. There is no black business where we can go and get the same products Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it showed, it showed us our deficiencies. It's yeah. the same thing with grocery stores. It's like I would love to go to a black owned grocer. Yeah. But where? <laughs> you know. We don't have them. Gas stations, we banks. You know, we have one one bank here. One bank here. Mm -hmm. Bank. You know, uh, we don't have any black gas stations, or we may have one or two that's sporadic, that's difficult to locate. We have a few businesses, but we're not in prominent locations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it showed us our deficiencies and where we need to come together to really, you know, spark change in, 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 the, in the black community. I agree. Because we can't, we can't continue to wait on them, you know, to help us and to give us handouts. We, no, sir. we gotta help ourselves. Right. Yeah, I'm in complete agreement. I, I've just recently been on a personal quest to make sure that every black entrepreneur is actually legit. Like, can you make sure that you are legit? That's why we can't find you because you doing business under mm -hmm. the table. Like, stop it. Mm -hmm. I said it out loud. And that's it's another thing it. because they, they, think this is, they think this is easy. And, and, right, and it's right. Not. They think it's a game. It's not. This is not easy. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is not easy. And if you're going to do it, you're going to have to see it through. When it gets hard, when it's easy, when it works, when it don't, when you got support, when you don't. Why? 
in you and in you. And again, like, I mean, COVID, it was not, you know, a, 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 I mean, a, a gut punch. It was just kind of like a maneuver. Yes, yes. You know, how, how do we adjust? How do we keep this thing moving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, now, that's a good point um, as far as legitimacy, because there may be people um, in the African American community who do what we need, but we can't mm -hmm. find them because they in their basement yeah. um, <laughs> operating under the table. And I'm here for the side hustle. That's how most entrepreneurial ventures start. However, yeah. at some point, you do need to legitimize your business exactly. and really, it, as we say, do what you're going to do. Yep. Um, and I think that, um, <laughs> okay, so we've got comments. Um, somebody <laughs> says, stop using Cash App with your business. That's a red flag for me. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody else says, no professional email. Um, that they think down. Oh, Dom, I agree. Facts. So um, there, are, there are things that um, business owners need to do to really tighten up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something it, um, African American businesses can definitely look to do. Um, as Whitney said on here, buy your domain, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it, I agree, Don, that it did open the door to shine a light on where we're deficient um, and, where, and where we have just overkill. We got a gazillion of these but none of these. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that for some of the things that we're going to need to do going forward, it's going to take collaborative efforts. Um, and Lone Rangers, I don't think are going to make it. I think it's going to take um, just collab, you know, people coming together and getting things done, whether it's in real estate where people come together and start buying homes. Um, and mm -hmm. I've seen story after story um, with people doing that. Um, whether it's people coming together um, and buying a grocery store, people coming together, purchasing um, a gas station and then another, et cetera. So um, mm -hmm. I think collaborative efforts are going to be important in order for African-American businesses to grow and for some of, and to fill some of those gaps um, that we mm -hmm. see in our community. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a couple of comments working under the table. Um, but you can't expand beyond that um, if you're hiding in the shadows. Um, another comment from Gwen says that the other issue is that black owned businesses start without any capital. So it's harder to get out of the basement. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with that. Um, so I, I, I think um, that the key to that too is that we need to fund our own stuff. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. But in order to do that, somebody's gotta have some money. Um, and create um, kind of our own pools of support um, for our businesses. Because otherwise, it's um, if you don't qualify, um, and, and Katrina and I had um, kind of a text message uh, battle about this earlier, um, you'll just kind of assume that um, you're not going to get the loan or you're not going to get the grant and what have you. So you, you won't even apply. Um, but if we have our own pool of resources for Black businesses to draw from, we may see um, an uptick there. Okay, we have um, a question for you guys. Um, what advice or suggestions can you provide to consumers who have supported Black businesses but have been burnt, hurt, or not done right? I got to answer to that, but I'm going to see what y'all got. <laughs> I mean, it... it that's such a that's such a touchy touchy area because I mean, it depends upon the business itself um can you find that product somewhere else or i mean is that a specific place that you can only find that and you know you're constantly getting you know horrible service i mean it's it's so yeah it's just so uh okay well, I think it, it's unfair for to make the assumption that just because you've had a problem with one black business, that there's a problem yeah. with businesses in general. Yeah. Our yeah. Um, our white counterparts don't do that. They don't stop patronizing white businesses because they have a bad experience at one. So it has to do with the business owner. And I think it's an opportunity to help you, for you to help that 
particular business owner, because sometimes we make mistakes, but we don't know that it's a mistake. Or we don't know that mm -hmm. we've offended you. Or we don't know that it's something to the extent that you're not going to come back at all. But mm -hmm. you don't take the time to say, hey, well, when I visited your establishment, I didn't like the way you did this. Or I think the policy would be better if you did so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And so those are the adjustments I've had to make as a business owner. It has nothing to do with me being a black woman. It's mm -hmm. the fact that I want to be an excellent business owner. And so I believe that as a people, we need to love more and, and encourage. Don't just lump us all together and say, oh, I'm not doing business with black folk. Well, we'll never get ahead that way. And we're the only, only race of people that will pull our own people down and then complain that we're not, we don't exist. Like it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So let's really try to come together and say, okay, so how can I help you? Because I see this and that person, I, I guarantee you th that the struggle of a black business owner is nothing like the struggle of a white business owner. I mean, we coming in just with so many different at things. At a deficit, we're, already at a deficit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that we're battling and we want to serve our people. And mm -hmm. so we, we're doing the best that we can with what we have. And then for people who turn their backs on you because you make one mistake. Now you go back to Walmart over and over and over again. Exactly. You know, they can treat you you know, horrible. Yeah. You're still going yeah. back and still going back. Mm -hmm. exactly. you, don't, you don't stop we're, buying. We're yeah. harder on our, on our own people. You know than we are on our white counterparts. I agree. I agree. And the other thing, the point that I was going to make, Renee touched on it in the comments, um, is that you have to also remember that a lot of Black business owners um, have never been in corporate America before, have oh. never really been exposed to what business excellence should look like. So they don't have a business model to follow. They're just in the kitchen frying their chicken, doing their thing, and serving um, you know, your food as best they know. They don't know that they have to also be excellent in how they package and how they um, treat you and how the um, girl at the cash register is. They don't understand that all of that is a part of service. They just mm -hmm. think, you know, if the food is good, you're going to be back. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and because they have not been exposed to business excellence, um, be it in corporate America or just being taught, um, they don't have a model to follow. Um, the other um, point that you make, Katrina, that I think is really important too, is that as um, Black people, we need to take the time to call those businesses and let them know why we feel the way that we do. Because like you said, in some cases, they may not know. Some cases, they might just be trifling. I'll give you that. But right. in other, <laughs> but they're white trifling business owners too, so twist it not. Um, but I think if we do better as a people at, you know, writing that letter, sending that email, not, you don't even necessarily have to blast them in a review, but just mm -hmm. get the information to them to let them know, hey, Excellent. you know, I'm here to support you, bro. I want to, you know, look out for you. But these are the things I saw in your um, business while I was there. You really, really need to tighten that up. You know, and mm -hmm. then call them to the carpet on it. Hold them accountable to changing and come back and see mm -hmm. if they've made the changes that you suggested. Exactly. You know, and if if not, call them on it again. Because right. the, the goal <laughs> is um, for, uh, for iron to sharpen iron. You, you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's for iron to sharpen mm -hmm. iron. So um, we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. We already know the rule when it comes to us. We have to be twice as good to get half as much. We know That's the right. rule. And so right. we have to keep reiterating that in our community so our businesses can step up to another level. I personally would love to see us have a black standard to where we rate black businesses um, and like they do in the hotel system, five star, four star, three star, whatever, um, and rate our businesses so um, we can set some parameters and guidelines and goalposts in place so businesses will know what things they need to do in order to reach a five-star level, what um, classes they need to take, or what, um, 
I don't know what what processes they need to tighten up on or fix or or what have you. So mm-hmm. that that's just my my rant concerning black businesses. But I wanted to make certain that we got that in um, on this mobile moment because in this last season, like I said, I've been highlighting African American businesses intentionally, and I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that we um, injected that into the conversation because it's really important um, that we do our part. Um, And this is just my little part, which is spotlighting other black business owners, but everybody's got a part in our community to play to make certain that we take our community to the next level. So with that, we're almost done. Um, If you guys got any more questions, drop them in the comments because we are, um, we are at time um, and we are almost done. So um, question I ask everybody, what books are you reading or what do you recommend? Um, I recommend um, Extreme Ownership. Um, it is a um, book about Navy SEALs, how they implement leadership um, tactics and skills and, and help them to win battles and things of that nature and how you can implement those skills into entrepreneurship and business. Uh, nice. There's also, um, what is the other book? Uh, Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah. Is it Yep. All right, Trina. I just started reading um, Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss. Oh my God, that one. Woo. Yeah. Tools so, of the Titans, you write that one down. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's amazing. Um, it's like about this thick. It's like a Bible. But is it? Like, yeah, I got it on. I got it on um, Audible. But oh, the, you have been listening a long time. <laughs> you have been listening for the rest of this year. Because that book took four hours. I'm like, oh. I, I, I have that book. I'm going to show you. Hopefully, okay. I'm going to get out real close. The subtitle is uh, Tactics and Habits of Billionaires, Icons, and Oh, yeah, that's an encyclopedia. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I got it I on but I would have never. It's no joke, though. But yeah, you're gonna be listening a long time. So God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine listening to Tim Ferriss that long. Um, but it's in um I that's why I, I have it really close by because um I still refer to it. it. Has some really good interviews in it. So if you guys haven't read that, um I I would highly recommend that um as well. And I just put both of you guys book recommendations in there. Oh, make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh. Um, Jonine um, talked about just going back to our previous conversation she was talking about looking at um, Rosewood and Tulsa Black Wall Street um, kind mm-hmm. of as a um, template for um, what mm-hmm. we need to do um, going forward and I think people um, have definitely been looking back at um, those historical uh, movements um, to learn from them and to um, use it as a blueprint as to how we can move forward. So I appreciate um, that that comment, um, Jonine. So um, with that, I'm going to um, close up this episode of Mogul Moments, but before I let our guests go, um, please let our folks know how they can find you um, and um, online or otherwise. So let's, Dominique, let folks know. Um, my, you can find me on my website, www homes by dominic dot info um my facebook handle was homes by dominic you can find me on twitter at sold by dominic um you can either write me on email d irvin at realestate one.com or you can connect with me via phone 248-982-0815 all right and miss katrina I can be found um, for the spa at fundamentalspa.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Fundamental Spa. And then for my coaching and consulting business, I would love to help um, our startups, um, particularly our African-American startups get, get um, legit. And um, so we can be found, I need us to be found. And I do that through Katrina Michelle Creative, and I can be found on Facebook at Katrina Michelle Creative mm-hmm. and on Instagram at Katrina.Michelle. Awesome. Hopefully you guys caught all that. I put um, some of it in our comments as well. If you're watching this later on YouTube, 
um, all of this will be down in the description. So you'll be able to find um, both of our guests with just a click of a button. So I'm gonna say goodbye to our guests. Thank you so much. I held you a little bit over, I apologize, but this conversation was so good. And I knew that it would be. Um, so if I happen to invite you guys back, you'd be game. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Because I'm thinking about having a, a big um, business roundtable, um, but I don't know. We'll see. We Because we've got some more discussions to be That'd had. Be awesome. um, so we, we can help one another. So I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys tuning in to Mogul Thank Moments. Thanks um, for having um, me. My pleasure. My pleasure. You guys can go ahead and log off. And right. I am going to share with you all um, kind of what's uh, coming up in our um, next episode, hopefully, um, I'm thinking that uh, next week, because of the holiday, um, I am going to um, either, I don't know, I'm going to either tape something um, this week, I might not do it live, um, or I might do some mogul minutes or something. Um, but I have a episode brewing that I was trying to pull together by next week, but it won't happen um, by next week. So the week following, um, we're going to be talking about um, health and wellness, because there's one thing that I know for certain that there is no wealth without health. And um, I just recently read an article that um, talked about how particularly in the African-American community that so many of us were infected by COVID and um, we had so many fatalities in our community because of COVID due to other underlying health conditions. And because of some of our pre-existing conditions um, and our lack of access to um, solid healthcare, uh, we were more susceptible than some others. So there are some things that we can do as a community better. That's just the bottom line. We can do better. Um, regardless to what happens with healthcare, it's being gutted as we speak. Um, but regardless to what happens with that, we can do better simply by eating better and um, watching what we're putting in our mouths and making adjustments. And that goes from everything to what you're eating on a daily basis, to what you're feeding your kids, to what they cook at your church, to what you cook at the cookout, everything. There, there's just a better way, guys. And so we're going to have a hard conversation um, because it's time to really take our health um, into our own hands and make it our own responsibility because nobody else is going to do it for us. Um, they would love to keep feeding us garbage um, because that's how they make money. They make money off of our illnesses. And um, if we start down that path of wellness, um, we can circumvent um, a lot of the issues that we see in our community. So we're going to have the hard discussions and talk about just some simple things that you can do um, to make the shift um, towards health and wellness. We'll probably have Katrina back. I'm going to have um, some others back um, that specialize um, in this particular area, but I haven't confirmed them yet. So that's why um, I can't say for sure, for sure. They're working out their schedule and some other things. So, um, but I'm going to have a nutritionist here, somebody that um, is um, very well versed in um, plant based diet as well. So we're going to just have the conversation. So I hope you guys um, come back. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks so much um, for joining us. It's been a pleasure um, being with you today. Those of you that are watching live on Facebook, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are what make Mogul Moments so much fun. Watching your comments come through, watching you get engaged, you guys talking to each other, um, sharing notes and um, comments, you guys make it all worth it. So again, um, this is Camille Jamerson. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to Mogul Moments. It's been my pleasure to be your host. I look forward to coming to you again soon. In the meantime, um, go back and watch some of the old, old um, Mogul Moments episodes and leave a comment down um, in YouTube. Um, share those with your friends and family, um, particularly um, those that are looking to build a business. And for those of you who have not started your business yet, let's get it going. There is no time like the present to start becoming the mogul that you want to be. 
I know you can do it. So let's get it started. Talk to you guys later. Bye.